Okay, so um, I mentioned that I was going to try or see if I could still draw this old book cover from my childhood. And I had a little bit of time today, so I thought I would dive in and see what I could get going. So this is my iPad over here with the image that I'm working on. And I can pinch it in a little bit closer if I want. This is just a canvas panel. Um, it had an old painting on it that I have simply painted over. Actually, I'm going to shrink. I'll shrink you down a little bit. And I'm just going to get started. What you can't see over here to the side is that uh, I have my palette set up. And I'm just going to go straight into this directly with a brush.
isn't it lovely hearing them? It's windy today and I can guarantee you that they are barking at nothing. So typically people think of drawings as being done with a paint or with a pencil. I love to draw or I prefer to draw actually with a paintbrush. Um, I get, you know, I'm using the same sort of movements as I would with a pencil, but now I'm actually just able to carve in big giant shapes and fill the surface with marks a lot more quickly than I could with a pencil. And also what drawing with a brush allows me to do is draw with form instead of with edges. I can actually carve or sculpt out the shape of my object really quickly and define it with form itself, or modeling itself instead of just finding the edges like you would with a pencil. So I'm just gonna Soften these a little bit. I'm going to get a little bit of a smaller brush so that I can go in and define some of the facial features. The other thing that you can't see that I'm trying to do is that every time I return to my palette, I'm trying to change up my brush, change the color that's on my brush just a little bit. This is a tricky angle, getting that tilt of the nose and the lips it involves a lot of careful sorts of edge work and some value jumps. Oh, this needs to be darker. Comes in tighter. This is exactly how I start a pet portrait commission also. I draw directly in paint on the 
panel and I just continue to refine it until I get that likeness achieved. I can tell that I have the head a little bit too narrow, but that's a super easy fix. Let's see these. And I'm gonna put that little brush away and I'm gonna go back to my big one because I don't wanna get caught up in making tiny little marks when I'm trying to paint form. too dark. That's okay because we're layering marks in. I can be a lot more forgiving. And if I were working directly with a pencil and having to make each of these exact. I'm also thinking about the dog's skeletal structure underneath. No amount of good painting can fix a drawing that isn't anatomically correct. And I can tell you that for certainty because I have tried. And I still don't have that shape quite right. When you work this way, from general to specific with a brush, you can actually layer your marks and you don't have to get super meticulous with painting every stroke of fur because the way that you layer the marks actually tells a story for you. So there you go. I've spent about 15 minutes on this. And it's really a lovely, sweet little sketch. I know setters have a funny, they have kind of a flat head, but it's a little pointed too. And I'm not sure I got that quite right, but you get the idea. I'm just going to cut back in here with my uh, lighter colors. These look like white on the um, video probably, but they're actually uh, some really lovely pales. So there you go. A sketch done from the cover of Outlaw Red. And I look forward to seeing what sketches you create uh, from your inspiration, whether it's this book cover or something else. Thanks. Appreciate you watching. Oh, Finnegan says thank you too.